Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this week we are going outside for a little spot of plein air painting and I've got a sketch of a lemon study for you that you can download a reference image from the blog to work along with the painting. Here I'm setting up a plastic craft box that can be used with acrylic paints when working in a hotter climate. So I've cut these small sections of a stay wet palette and they fit into the slots on the top row and this will just keep the mixes wetter for longer. I soak the absorbent paper underneath with water and then lay a greaseproof paper on top of that and then the paint sits on top of the greaseproof paper. This is some acrylic glazing liquid gloss in a little pot. That's from Golden Paints. And I've also cut a grey tear off palette to size and just taped it onto a piece of card so it fits really snugly to the bottom shelf of the craft box. And this acts as a nice sturdy mixing palette when I'm sketching but then can be taken out again and stored neatly within the box when I'm travelling. The colours that I'm using are Titanium White, Azo Yellow Medium, a Tharlo Green with a Blue Shade, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. I'm using two different whites, a student grade Galleria White from Windsor & Newton and an artist grade Heavy Body White from Golden Paints. And for this sketch I predominantly use the Windsor & Newton White because its consistency out of the tube is a little bit more fluid and it won't jump the colours as much as with the titanium white because it isn't as strong, it hasn't got the same level of opacity to it. So here I am just sat in the shade with the box on my knee and the initial drawing has been sketched out onto a canvas board. And the canvas board I pre-prepared in the studio with a colour ground and this is just with yellow ochre acrylic paint that has been diluted slightly with water. And for the sketch on top I'm using a marker which is a watercolour marker which is a burnt umber colour and then a Pentel Aquash water pen. And let's just blend some of the edges of the marker because the watercolour marker is water soluble. So the first colour I'm mixing is a muted grey tone and that's using the Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue and a little bit of the Titanium White. I'm not using any water to dilute the paint but just dipping the brush into the acrylic glazing liquid. I'm using a small size 4 round brush, this is a synthetic brush from Rosemary & Co and this is a series 344. So I'm concentrating on the shadow shapes that is being cast by the shadows of the leaves and the branches of the lemon tree and then I'm painting in this pattern around the drawing of the dark tree trunk on the bottom left. Once I've got some of those darker greys in, I can then start to add a lighter, warmer grey tone. And this will just increase the tonal range and the variety within the background. So at this stage, I'm still only looking for the spaces and the shapes between and around the tree.
I've now swapped to a larger size 6 filbert brush and this is from Isabe, this is called a Isocryl brush. And I'm using a dark mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue and now I can start to push the darks a bit more and block into the tree trunk. I can add a little bit of variation to that tree trunk just by adding white into the mix and again that just indicates the direction of the light fall. I've now swapped to a small flat synthetic brush. This is a size 10. This is also from Rosemary & Co, and this is a Series 302. I begin to block in the base using the Azo Yellow Medium. And this Azo Yellow isn't as opaque as Cadmium Yellow, but it's a non-toxic version that's pretty close to a Cadmium Yellow Medium. And you might notice some areas where the watercolour marker blends into the wet paint that I'm adding on top and this mixes onto the canvas and gives a little muted orange hue to the undertone. So here I take a tiny touch of the Tharlow green, that's with a blue shade, and just mix it in with the yellow to get this lovely sap green colour. And I can start to apply this colour to the top section of the painting and begin to vary the intensity and the variety just by adding a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white. So adding white will cool the yellow but it pushes it and allows us to have a greater tonal range within the painting. So now the first block in has dried, I can then have a look at my sketch again and just judge my tones once more. So 
So at this stage, the light has also changed around me. So there isn't as much as that pattern contrast that we had before on the wall, but I'm just trying to keep that color effect in my mind's eye until the cloud cover passes. So just using the fine edge of the square brush here, I can start to indicate the pattern of the branches. I'm now mixing a cooler blue to balance with the sap green and I can paint this onto the top section of the painting. And now when the sun has briefly come back into the scene around me, I just try to get some of that shadow pattern on the wall down again, just again looking for that pattern of shapes. So here with the Azo Yellow Medium and the Burnt Umber, I can mix darker, duller tones that can act as the shadow side of the lemon. So now again, when I'm assessing the painting and looking again at the tree, it feels as if my lemons in my painting are camouflaged a bit too much next to the rest of the tree leaves. So what I want to do now is paint some more refinement around them with a darker green to try and pull the lemons forward and push the leaves back.
So here you can see how bright the lemon on the right appears. So I want to try and echo that in my painting. So by painting the darker green foliage at the top of the painting and then breaking that up again still with the muted blue colour, there are less colours to fight with the intensity of the lemon. So they're harmonious together, but I still want the lemons to be the focus in the piece. As I continue to simplify the background, I can also accentuate the lemon even more. And then finally, to really bring the lemons forward, I'm adding some thicker impasto onto the sides of the lemon that are hitting the light. And throughout the entire painting, it's only really this thick impasto onto the lemons. So again, that makes them stand out against the rest of the picture. So here's a finished plein air acrylic sketch. The total painting time was about 30 minutes with a 15 minute sketch time to get me started. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.